everyone. Welcome back. I have a fabulous guest speaker here today with us. Feeling very honored and blessed that he has said yes. It's great. His name is Larry Garrett. Garrett Hypnosis and Wellness Center based out of Chicago. And you wouldn't believe it. He's been in this for quite some time. <laughs> Lots of walking in other people's shoes and experiences to go along with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we begin, welcome, Larry. How are you? Oh, thank you. Nice introduction. Thank you so much. And I'm honored to be here with you. I'm honored. Yeah. It's thank very, you um, very thank good. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know getting these set up sometimes can be a little bit of um, finagling, but it always works out. Yeah, it always works out. I think it's like this. It's like, I don't really care what I'm seeing because I'm looking at you. I, I mm -hmm. want the, your your viewers, though, to see me. So, you know, when somebody says, how many years you've been doing hypnosis? And I tell them they expect some old man. But I was 12 <laughs> years old when I began, so it was okay. <laughs> Not really. There you actually, go. Actually, actually, I was 26 when I began, and that was pretty good. Yeah. Wow. How did you come across it? Because clearly with the years now, it's definitely been a passion of yours. You know, I'm obsessed with it. That's the best word I could use. I started hypnosis um, as a very skeptical individual. I was very interested in astrology. Mm -hmm. And I went to an astrologer's convention and there was a stage hypnotist there. And he was doing things like making people stuck to a chair, forget their name. And I said, oh. <laughs> That's a crock. I don't believe in this stuff. And, you know, a good hypnotist always picks out a person who's skeptical, don't they? Don't we? Yeah, we do. You know, I didn't know that. And I, I was Mr. Cool, smoking my cigarettes, biting my nails. My hands would tremor from anxiety. And, he, mm. and so he caught me and he says, why don't you come to my class as a guest? No charge. No charge. Well, OK. You know, yeah. so at the time I was married, I couldn't <laughs> afford it anyway. <laughs> And uh, so I went to this class, and at that time, I was a very anxious person. I had a lot of anxiety-related symptoms. I had uh, stomach ulcers. I had cluster headaches, uh, mm. uh, tremor. As I said, I smoked too much, bit my nails, and I was always worried, always worried. And uh, so he hypnotized me. His name was Fred Shavel. I remember him well. I just wrote an article. I write, I write uh, for the Hypnosis Journal for the National Guild of Hypnotists, and so I just finished my article for this month. We could even chat with that if you wanted. But yes. uh, I wrote about Fred Shavel and the first time I was hypnotized. So I'm sitting there with my eyes closed and I'm saying, I'm not hypnotized. I could open my eyes anytime I want. <laughs> <I'm not> even... <laughs> right? right? Yes. You know the story, right? Yes. <laughs> I opened my eyes and, and I sat there and I said, in my mind, I said, something's wrong here because nothing was wrong. And that was my introduction to hypnosis. My hands weren't shrimming. I didn't feel nervous. My stomach wasn't hurting. I didn't crave a cigarette. He never said any of these things. All he did was put me in the level of hypnosis. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And today, to this day, I, I just wrote an article about how to be successful with every client. And today, to this day, every client that sits in my chair Whatever they're there for, I say, how do you want to feel when you walk out yes. the door? So I, you know, I've assisted you. You must have read that somewhere. Huh? Yeah, the emotions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so they feel clear and they feel okay. And they feel, and then they're going to accomplish their goal. And that's what I felt. That's how I got into it. And I became pretty obsessed with it. Mm, that's I, was married at the, I was married at the time. And I often say hypnosis became the other woman. <laughs> I was with I was with her all the time. <laughs> every, every book I could find. This is a now. This was in 1968. So books weren't you couldn't find internet because there was no internet. So everything was done through snail mail. Uh, but we had Powers Publishers and a couple of other uh, mm -hmm. places where you could get them. And I had accumulated many books on hypnosis at that time, more than today, probably, although I have many. But I meant I read them all at that time. And mm -hmm. Now I don't read as many books. I, I read articles. I listen to you, things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, because if you ever notice, you can read 10 books on hypnosis. And if you get a new paragraph, you're excited. Yes, <laughs> that's true. We, very, very true. I, I just I just finished a book co-authored with uh with an associate of mine in uh, our office, uh, uh, Anita Barton, and it's called mm -hmm. "The Way of the Superior Hypnotist," and uh, I think it's one of the best books ever written. 
excuse yeah. the ego. They say it's not arrogance when it's true. That's true. I absolutely <laughs> agree with that. And I noticed that book too. And I'm like, I need to order that. <laughs> so yeah. it's on well, my list today to get done. I yeah. think we're waiting for a reprint, but uh, as soon as it's there, you stay in touch with me and I'll make sure you get one. Okay, thank I you. Could send it, I could probably send you one if you want it on, uh, on a PDF or something, but uh, the paper is nice too. Yep, that's true. But uh, that I would so, welcome that. Thank you. So tell me, uh, you invited me, Anne, to this uh, place and we're getting to know each other and starting to do some things. And tell me how uh, I always say to my clients that when they walk in, I say, how can I help you? So how could you help me or what are we doing here? Hmm, that's a really good question. Yes. I think I know you? like what I've noticed in your YouTube channel, which is fabulous, by the way. Thank you. I love the signature sign up where you send love to everybody. I love it. You know, it, nobody believes that, but I do. I love everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I'd realized through the my previous years here in my progression into hip, hypnotherapy and becoming a therapist, mm -hmm. I've noticed I love humanity in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. And there were times in some of my own regressions where I literally could <laughs> be in a moment with that, that guide or that partner that's yeah. next to me. And I'm looking down at my body and I'm saying, no, that wasn't right. And then their guide saying, no, job well done. I'm like, that's not enough. <laughs> you know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And coming back into, and whether it's like people that embrace past lives or alter realities, whichever, it was an experience that I had in what I call a dream state. Yeah. So it was profound to me. And I have found that um, the more modalities that I experience myself, whether I hire a clinician or an astrologist or a Reiki healer, so on. When I found hypnosis myself and yeah. just became really involved about two years ago, and then, you know, being certified in this past year, uh -huh. it's been the most profound. Yes. It is just, and so like direct to the point, spot on. And like you said, you're sitting there, not but like, no, I'm, I'm not being hypnotized, right? Nope. And everything's <laughs> like, I'm, it's not going to happen. And then you come out of it and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. What was Something that? has drastically what changed. Was that? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and it's getting that uncomfortable feeling to become comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Switching it up. You no, know, you're right. You're right. Uh, uh, do you do you know uh, the music by Nancy Sinatra, Lee Hazelwood? Mm, I know Nancy Sinatra, but I okay. don't know that specific. Yeah, look that up on YouTube. Nancy Sinatra okay. and Lee Hazelwood. Uh, they sang a lot of duets. They did a couple of albums together. And he's got this very deep, bassy tone, you know, and she's got this high <laughs> melody, melodic. And so they have a song that says, I've been down so long, it looks up to me. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yeah. It's like flipping the switch, going yes. a total 180 degrees in a reset. And that's why I think we love hypnosis so much. And I think uh, the attraction that you've drawn to me by just that one statement that I said <clears throat> is that hypnosis just gives people such a neutralized feeling. Mm -hmm. So you're not happy. You're not sad. You're not depressed. You're not angry. You're just okay. And yes. we have words for that since childhood, and we ignore those words. Everything's cool. Everything's copacetic. Everything's A-OK. -okay, mm -hmm. Everything's fine. But we don't always know that until we have done mindfulness or self-hypnosis or, or prayer or mm -hmm. meditation. Once we learn how to balance that mind, ooh, mm -hmm. the world changes. Yes. And I, and I attempt to live it, you know. I say, as you said on my uh, my videos, I, I always say, whoever is watching, I love you. I love you for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. But not only that, I love you as a person because, you know, I've been around the world a few times. <laughs> I always say I've been around the block a few times, but I've been around the world a few times. And I've met some people who do some bad things, but I've never met a bad person. Isn't yes. That? Yeah. Yeah. You know I don't know. Did you read my book, Healing the Enemy or Hypnotizing the Devil? No, I've read, well, not fully, okay. not completely yet, but yes. Mm -hmm. That I could send you. I have plenty of those. 
That <laughs> will do. Um, they, just, they, just, they, just, they just translated it. It's coming out December 22nd in Japanese. In Japan. oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank wow. you. I'm so, so excited. I guess that's a good thing, you know. <laughs> it is good, yes. I think because of my obsession with hypnosis, I've had a lot of opportunities, Anne, and and uh, mm. and I don't look for them; they just happen, you know. Like being invited yes. to Iraq and uh, uh, Japan, writing my book, you know, things like that. And I and I always always say that those are great gifts of life to to know a little bit more, a little bit more. And I always say I don't know everything, but I have been around the block a few times. And around the block to me, metaphorically, means every time I meet a client. I learned mm -hmm. something new. I experienced something new. Mm -hmm. and we'll never know it all until we take our last breath and we go, okay, there I've got it. And now we can close the <laughs> lid and put us under and we're okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so, if, you notice, uh, if you notice, I fool around a lot, but that's okay. That's my style. You know. It's good. Yes, I do that too. I <laughs> have um, a new appreciation for just being unapologetically me. <laughs> what, what, what time are you in? <laughs> Pardon What's, me? What, uh, what astrological sign are you? Leo. Leo. Oh, you are in yeah. control, baby. You are. You are. In uh, control. And that has been a big one to overcome. But yes. I did a, an experiment uh, with self-hypnosis. This was a little while back. Yeah. And there were some big transitions going on. And I thought, you know what? I can feel the ego. Yeah. And Leos especially have very yeah. strong pride. <laughs> so, very strong so. pride. Yes. So it's like, okay, we are going to strip this down. And I don't recall, and I so wish I remembered saving it on my YouTube um, yeah. playlist because yeah. whichever meditation it was, it was so profound and deep. I literally laying on my couch, going into meditation mode and my feet are curling up yeah. and doing this weird bend. Like you would think it was like dehydration, but it wasn't, it was like an energy release. Yeah. And it was just getting rid of this extra pride and ego that was in my way, being self-sabotaging in there. I'm like, no, if I'm to serve humanity the way whomever chooses, not myself, yes. put me where I'm supposed to be, help yes. me meet the people I'm supposed to meet, and I will just trust instead of trying to control trust. everything <laughs> that's going on. What a powerful on. word. I think I did one of my five-minute videos on trust, didn't I? It's a fabulous one. That was one of the first ones I watched. <laughs> yeah. I like gratitude and trust. Gratitude yes. and trust. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. It was um, a big one, a big one. And since then, it's been kind of like a snowball effect. You know, yeah. you start off with a little pee and then you roll it down the hill and it's gathering more snow and it's gathering more snow. And then I've come across you and along with some other individuals too. And it's just been this amazing process. And it's good. And I will admit, even though my clients are very happy with the ones that I've helped. Yeah. I still have those moments where I will wake up in the morning and that anxiety kicks in. And I'm like, okay, where's that coming from? And then I will go back into my own self-hypnosis, the healing part. And it's like, okay, we're going to let this go. Just breathe. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, Definitely a learning process for all. And I have a question actually in regards to that for you. Sure. So with the clients that you meet with, yes. okay, I, maybe more so when you first started out, mm. did you find that no matter what the scenario that they were experiencing and being healed, that there was always some little part in there that was for you as well to heal? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How do you think I learned how to love and live the moment? Because <laughs> hundreds of people don't love and live the moment. Right. Yes, you're, you're right. And and not only that, that's that's a great question. And I have a great answer. And that is, yes, I think still to this day, mm -hmm. I'll sit and speak to somebody that has something that resonates with me and say, oh, yeah, I remember that. And, mm -hmm. and I do. I do continually. And that's how that's how we grow. You know, uh, this is a good story. Um, I spoke to somebody recently. What? Who was it I spoke to? I, I can't remember the profession, but it was a professional. Let's make it up. Let's say I spoke to my dentist and I said, so tell me something. Did you become a dentist because you want to have nice teeth? And he says, yeah. I said, I became a therapist because I was crazy. <laughs> 
so so you see we we do we do get drawn to what we need yes that's true mm -hmm. oh that, but um... hypnosis has literally saved my life saved my life in many ways even even i had an occurrence uh, and uh, we have a podcast i don't know if you know of it it's called uh hypnotic rhythms podcast.com and so myself and one of the other hypnotists uh, 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 uh i'm trying to one of the other hypnotists <laughs> in my office i could draw a blank right away i call it chemo brain but it's really probably just nothing more in short-term memory uh, craig Kesick. craig started it and each month we sit there and we discuss hypnosis issues and and the same thing, you know, that we, we get into these little stories about hypnosis, but the real issue is, I believe that my life has been gifted and saved because of learning how to feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, and thank you to I all the clients. Them. Thank you to all the clients who have taught me. Yes, right. I, yeah. um, I actually have uh, one of my sons is uh, on the autism spectrum. So mm -hmm. long story short, when he was mm -hmm. little, I never, nothing registered for me because it, it just, we were fine sort of we thing until it got brought up by another family member and some friends. And I, oh my goodness, this, <laughs> and I love my son dearly, but I call him this young man. He has taught me more about compassion mm -hmm. and love for others than I think yeah. anyone on the planet because it, it's just different wiring in there. Yeah. And it's funny, as you, with your videos, when you sign off and um, send out love, there was one, I can't remember if it was the trust one or the gratitude, it might've been the money, the more recent one, money one, but I'm, yeah. qu I'm quite good at, because I love people in general. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are some that mm, not too fond of spending time with. <laughs> yeah, right, you don't spend time with them, right, that's it. Yes. Yeah, that's what and we're I talking realized, about too. Yeah. Don't spend yeah. time with the naysayers of life, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, uh, and there is a gentleman from way back that, for some reason, has just popped up, back up. And I know for myself, if there's a reoccurring thought or a memory of someone that's coming, it's like, oh, there's something there I need to look at, right? To to release or to look at it different ways and understand it better. And I had already sent, um, or I had done a forgiveness thing with this person. And I felt good about that. And then your videos triggered me into the love part. I'm like, I haven't sent that person love. I'm like, I don't love that person. I can't send them like just from events. And yeah. then it switched over. I, I wish I knew what the word was that you had used, but it switched over. I'm like, wait a minute. I love their soul. Mm -hmm. I do. I profoundly love their soul. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to switch and get, mm -hmm. I can send them love. Yes. Don't like you had said earlier that you don't have to love the actions, mm -hmm. right? Right. The behaviors, but the the genuine self. I was like, it was incredible. Like for me, it was an incredible moment. I felt I was like dancing around the living room, like yes, sweet, right? I got it. <laughs> yeah, and that and that's that's sort of our goal. I think I don't know of yourself. I assume the same is that if we could plant a seed in each individual we yes. meet of feeling better, they might spread the word like pay it forward. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, so, you know, that that's, that's another issue we we're speaking about. We just did a podcast yesterday. It's why it was fresh on my brain, even though I forgot it. And that is, uh, we were speaking about just that. And that is associating with people who think alike. Now, when we are around people who don't think alike, we're not there to convince them. You know, we were speaking about no. this phrase. I, I think I have a five minute video on who's right and who's wrong. You know, that one. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a client recently who was speaking of that. And, and I says, it's not who's right or who's wrong. Who feels good is who wins. And uh, so yeah. I don't need to be right. I just need to be okay. And and that works. That works. I As again, you know, as we both know hypnosis well. And, and the viewers, are your viewers as hypnotists as well as non-hypnotists? Is that right? Yes. Okay, good. It's yeah. um, a quite a wide audience range yeah. like truly those that are just coming on board into finding out different modalities right, right. and delving right. into hypnosis whether they themselves are becoming hypnotherapists or um going to one of the coaches and clients or to yeah. become a client to yeah. start that work and then i've noticed this pattern where 
it's almost like a recreation of what I've personally have done in the past 12 to 15 years, like who I saw. <laughs> so yeah. It's fascinating, but, but then it's been a, a, the overall connection for it is wellness. Yes. So it's just, it's literally the heart wellness, wellness, the mind yes. wellness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. been quite good. So I'm so curious did, about your article. Excuse me, say, say, miss it, say it again. I'm curious about your article that you just finished up. What's it about? Okay. Uh, I was talking about hypnotic rhythms. Mm -hmm. I said, What's a hypnotic rhythm? And I start my article by saying, I wasn't hypnotized. I heard everything you said. Next person says, I wasn't hypnotized. I fell asleep. He said, oh, how could I win? So as I've spent, you know, I, I'm really, I, I say it as best I can. I am really drawn to how this works and how the mind works, hypnosis especially. So what I've learned questioning hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, you know, and I've hypnotized quite a few. When I moved from my previous office to this office, I moved in this office in 1999. I had a person work in the front desk and I, and so we were moving all of our files, all handwritten files. We, mm -hmm. we still don't use a lot of computers. My intake folder is a, 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 a hard stock, you know, and I write in it. Mm -hmm. And she counted over 50,000. So wow. if, I, if I've met 50,000 people, I don't remember them all. That's a lot of people to sit and talk to. Yes. And, you know, and, and some of them were repeats and most of them maybe I, I had, I've had clients come to see me for over 30 years right now. But what I learned in all those people is that they had a common factor when they were hypnotized. And that's what my article is about. That when you're hypnotized, if you notice, sometimes you hear the hypnotist and sometimes you're daydreaming. Sometimes you space mm -hmm. out. Sometimes you don't hear anything. Okay. So when I start my hypnosis, uh, I, I can send you a little booklet we give out. When I start my hypnosis, what I do is I, looking, here we go. what I do is I take and I do a drawing something like this. This is a zigzag line. And I okay. call it the hypnotic rhythm. And I say, Sometime you hear me and then you drift off and doze for a second. Then you hear me and you drift oh, yeah. off and doze. And while you're doing this, your mind is opening. That's the feeling when you say, sounds great, and whatever you say. And uh, <laughs> that's right. So if you could explain that before you hypnotize a person, that's it. And the article also consisted of many little metaphors I use. I often say, first off, if, if you were teaching hypnosis, or first off, I say this, we teach the mind how to feel. We go to school and learn how to know things. Where do mm -hmm. we learn how to feel things? Hypnosis. And so I'm not treating somebody. I'm teaching somebody how to feel. Yes. So if, if I had a smoker, I'd say, you know what it feels like to crave a cigarette, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to teach you what it feels like to not crave the cigarette. What are you going to do with that new knowledge? So it'd be like if I taught you how to play a piano. I'll teach you how to play the simple song, Mary Had a Little Lamb or something. And mm -hmm. you go home and you practice every day for a month and you'll be really good at playing the song, maybe even a new song. So this, the analogy of that is saying that they don't practice, they're going to forget within a week or two how to play the song. They might remember where the keys are, but they will forget yeah. the feelings, the rhythm, the timing. And that's what my article is about. And, and then the real issue, Anne, is if you don't know how to play the piano, then you're going to have a hard time teaching somebody else. So you need to practice what you're teaching. That's yes. a big, big part of me. You need to practice what you're teaching. And uh, I say that consistently. If you don't practice what you're teaching, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is very true. Yeah. I tend to have um, quite a few people that will reach out and I'll create guided meditations, like specifically guided meditations. Yes. So it's not a... a full hypnosis session, yes. but if they want a little bit of a taste of just also to see if my voice works with their subconsciousness, yes. because right. you know, it's not always a fit. So mm -hmm. I'll create these short little ones and inevitably, yep, they will come mm -hmm. back and ask for, you know, the next level right. and uh, kind of go mm -hmm. from there. Yeah, <clears throat> it's been yeah. an awfully a lot of fun, actually. Yes. And I'm always humbled by what because you're, I don't want to say that you're tweaking around somebody's brain, but when someone gives you permission to go to right. your subconscious, that's an honor. It, it mm -hmm. is truly yes. deep an area deep. to be respected, you know? It's deep. 
it's deep. Mm -hmm. I often use the analogy, it's like a chiropractor adjusting a body, we're adjusting the mind. Yes. And, uh, we've often heard the phrase, I don't want to be playing with my mind. And I always joke, say, well, you haven't done a good job of it. Let me try. <laughs> Let me give you some new tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, again, I go and tell you, when I got in hypnosis, I was 26. And I remember my physician saying to me one day, if you don't learn to relax, you're going to be dead by the time you're 30. Wow. Yeah. I was medicated. I had, as I said, I had ulcers. I had headaches all the time. Yeah. And uh, life wasn't good. And and that's how I became so obsessed with it. Because life is good now. You know, life is good. I'm healthier now. I just went through a bout of cancer a couple of years ago, two years ago. Got over that real easy with self-hypnosis. They said, mm -hmm. year and a half or two because of your age. Hey, don't give me that age crap, you know. Yeah. I don't even know. How old do you feel? That's the issue. Not how old are you? How old do you feel? I feel pretty young. And uh, <laughs> I got through the hypnosis cancer-free in seven months. And uh, to me, that was a great gift to... Uh, to, to overcome it. And, uh, and today I'm going through the healing of chemo and even radiation mm -hmm. with the voice cracking sometime <clears throat> like that, excuse me. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, I think that the hypnosis can really do a number on our well-being. Yes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. um, truly remarkable. So how'd you start the summit? You started a summit, you were telling me before we met here in person, and you were telling me <laughs> you're doing a summit. I thought the summit yeah. was a conference. Well, I, it ended up being a suggestion from mm -hmm. another individual, and yeah. I thought, you know what? Why not? I, yeah. I've, for my personal history, I've been in a lot of different areas where I speak with the public, yeah. and uh, strangers off the street, and just um, museum type events and I've never been uncomfortable talking with people I've always told people I would be comfortable talking in front of the queen yeah. or sit on the ground outside on the floor with someone that's been homeless for months wonderful wonderful words so yes I just because uh, yes. people yes. are people you know and when well, even people. when my own nerves kick in I'm like wait a minute we're all human we just have different roles yep right don't we all have different roles you're right we yeah, we just have different roles. So I thought, you know what, while I go through my own transition and continue to build my passion with it, because I find I'm always looking at something, I'm either reading or listening or, you know, mm. <laughs> it just keeps growing. I thought I always like, I'd like to interview people. Why not? Isn't that great. Yes. Why not? So why not? And I, and a little bit of research and so on. I'm like, everyone has the right to say no for sure. And if it's not meant to, then it won't happen. And that's okay to be able to let it's again, that part of that little bit of control. Like, yeah. I don't need to control this, whoever's going to be on board is going to be on board. And my intent is to have fun, yeah. get to know individuals and teach, like, keep running. So whoever views these little interviews is just going to have more knowledge at their fingertips. Yeah. And then to go from there. So it's like, yeah, Wonderful. why not? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. You know, being in control is almost like needing to be right. And the real issue is when we don't need to be in control, we're in control. Yes. Yeah. We I don't agree. To, you know, I, I use a lot of stories with my clients, Anna. And one I have is if I say to you, don't think of an elephant, you think of the elephant. And <laughs> And the only way to stop thinking of the elephant that I know, because the more important it becomes, metaphorically speaking, for life, mm -hmm. I got to quit smoking or I'm going to die. They'll smoke more. I got to quit eating those sweets or I'm going to gain weight. They'll eat more. And it's the elephant, too. If I say it's worth $50,000 not to think of any big gray elephants, they can sure get big and gray. Yes. <laughs> and, and the way that I've learned for it to work is this refrain from judging yourself in this case. If I say to you, it's okay. If you want to think of elephants, go ahead. Mm -hmm. We don't need to. As soon as we make it okay. So that's the same way with control. I I like to feel at peace. And if you're at peace, you're in control. You know, I've always been a great follower of Wayne Dyer's work. And, and he does a mm -hmm. nice one on peace. And stay at peace and stay away from the people who are not at peace, even if some of your family members. Yes. Yes. And that's probably how... I moved on to another life, you know, because I, I I haven't been married in many, many years. And and uh, being married was not easy for me. I don't know. I don't know if I should have ever gotten married. I think of that because uh, 
I, I've been single since 1975. Sounds like I'm a confirmed bachelor or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but really, I think that why is because I'm at peace. You know, it's just me yeah. and my guy, Jack, over here. That's my dog sitting next to me over here. And yeah, yeah and he and I do well. He, he listens to everything I say. He doesn't talk back. And, you know, <laughs> I think the, I did a video on, on uh, the power of silence. And I, I use the dog for an example. Do you have a dog? I do. She is at my feet. <laughs> okay, good. See? So a dog lives the power of silence. And the power of silence is they don't talk, but they love unconditionally. They live the moment and they don't judge. Try and find a person who could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Not many of us could do that one. No. Yeah. no. Even though you might be aware to do it, you still yeah. don't do it. <laughs> Oh, well, very good. We're having yeah. a good conversation. Are we getting anywhere? Are you accomplishing anything with your summit with our silly conversation, which is fun? We're having Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. <laughs> love having Absolutely. fun. <laughs> Nuggets of information scattered throughout. And uh, there will be links, everybody, down below. So mm -hmm. you will see how to reach out to Larry okay, and his team, along with his YouTube channel, podcasts we will get the links together so everything is there for even more nugget gathering <laughs> more you. seeds what a, planted what a nice gift, what a nice gift. <laughs> i think I, so that's a great I, gift <laughs> yeah i share a story with you that goes back when i was in my early 40s and i had a mentor and her name was bessie bessie was a 92 year old woman mm -hmm. who did kind of weird stuff like voodoo stuff and magic she did the pendulum and she okay. did reflexology and she would tell you crazy stories, but you would always leave her house feeling better. And there I remember go. a friend of mine said, well, I think she's a crazy old lady. I said, well, now this is in the early 80s. I said, well, mm -hmm. she makes $45 each client cash. She sees 10 clients a week. She can't be too crazy at $450 a week. <laughs> <laughs> and so... So Bessie would do these crazy things and she'd stop and she had this slight accent. She was from uh, Yugoslavia, I think. And she had this mm -hmm. slight accent and she says, aren't we having fun? And she'd <laughs> laugh. Yeah, we're having fun. And that's what heals us, having fun. I yeah. agree. Even when I was in Iraq, I spent 60 hours with one of the most hated men on earth, Uday Hussein. And uh, he was a good man. He treated me good. You know, he didn't shoot me. And, mm -hmm. And he was a terrorist and everybody hated him. But like you say earlier, we kind of get inside the soul a little bit, you know, and we find mm -hmm. out who the person really is. And I learned about Uday, who's, I learned a lot about him. I, I learned when he was three, four years old, his mother would take him to the prison to visit his father and she would smuggle guns in his diapers. That's an interesting one. Wow. Was, That's was, in your book, correct? Is it? Yes, oh, it is. Yes. 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 Okay. And when he was 12 years old, he had his own gun. What do you do with a gun at 12 years old? You shoot somebody. That's the only thing I could think yeah. of having guns for. And, and of course, he's the leader's son, so he got away with everything. So what I'm getting at is he started just like you, just like me. It's just that his training along the way was mm -hmm. maybe contaminated, corrupt. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but as I say, I, I just meet people and I get inside them a little bit and I say, so far, I haven't met a bad person, although, and I've hypnotized many murderers, by the way. I've hypnotized many criminals. Yeah. Uh, I have some very special stories. That, in fact, that's I think that's in the first part of my book about our murder mm -hmm. I hypnotized in Chicago. I expected this murderer to look mean and vicious, and he was just a nice, gentle man. He just was in the wrong place. Even Uday Hussein, if you ever see photos of Uday Hussein, he was a mm -hmm. nice-looking man. and He, was he looks very man. well like Boom. just a great Boom. yeah presence yeah. yeah and and of course everybody hated him because they were afraid of him because he was kind of mean but to sit and talk to him was like talking to you you know i remember one time i may have that in my book also he said mr larry he called me mr larry mr larry how come you're not scared to be here with me and i just smiled and i says well if i invited you to my house would you be scared and he laughed you know <laughs> Somebody invites you to her house, you shouldn't be scared. No. <laughs> but of course, I live my life by trust. You know, you mm -hmm. said about trust. I'm glad you brought that word up. It's my most powerful word, trust. Mm -hmm. It's so good to trust, Anne, isn't it? 
Yes. Trust is magical. You know, if we doubt, nothing works. They won't hire me. I'll never get that money. I'll never get that new car. You're right. Mm -hmm. But if you trust, manifestation starts moving along naturally. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Trusting the self, I think, uh, for myself was one of the biggest. Because yeah. you can have those scenarios in your life and happenings where mm -hmm. you're, I don't want to say trampled on, but you're beaten down pretty low. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And then you question yourself. Yeah, so yeah. it's a you whole new yourself. hypnosis part, or that's what helped me the most actually, was yeah. through self-hypnosis and seeing someone yeah. um, that would put me in hypnosis where it was begin to trust myself again, because you're born perfect. Yeah. You're born with no imprints. And then you just, you know, things happen and then it comes down and down. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. But then when you recognize it and then it can get reframed, yeah, it's incredible. The catapult, like you literally just start yeah. jumping. It's like, wow, okay. Yeah. I yeah. like I like you, Anne. I like what you no, stand for. You. I like what you're saying. And of course, I love you also. But you know, you don't always you don't always like the people you love. That's interesting. You know, I love somebody, but I don't always like them. But uh, mm -hmm. I like you, and I like what you stand for and the words you choose. Yes, yes, you're doing it good. You're doing it good. I'm impressed. Step by step. <laughs> it works, well, doesn't it? It works. It does. Yeah. It does. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much, Larry, for your time. I know you're a busy gentleman. I, yeah. oh, so I always find it. time to talk, though. I'm a busy guy. And, you know, they say, Larry could talk to anybody. I used to stutter, you know. Before I got into hypnosis, I used to stutter. And really? Would, nothing would come out. Yeah. So everybody would say, Larry's shy. No, Larry wasn't shy. He stuttered since third grade. So because of his stuttering, he wasn't able to talk to people. But once I began to know hypnosis, I learned how not to stutter. See, and those are good words. I knew how to stutter. But I yes. didn't know how to not stutter. That's good, right? Yeah. New training. You know, I have a great phrase, Anne, I'll leave you with. Mm -hmm. What we've done the longest is the strongest. Oh, wow. Yes. Good or You're bad. Right. We've done the longest. Now, for, for 52 years, I've been doing hypnosis full time. And I have to share with you, I have attempted to learn how to feel good for 52 years. And... Mm. Uh, Better than the first 26 years of my life. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I wish you a beautiful day. I wish you well. I Thank wish you, you love. Know. And let's connect again, even privately. Let's just say we get, if we connect privately, then the others won't know what we're talking about. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> Aren't we having fun? <laughs> yes, always. Uh -huh. Oh, very good. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you. Larry, hang thank on you. for just another minute. Okay. okay. But okay. yes, thank you, everyone. Make sure that you take a look down below for all the links. Thank okay. So many thank great gifts. So yes. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>